Okay, as uh, the title suggests, um, this presentation is really about three things. I'm going to cover some other things because, you know, it, uh, apparently at my stage of life, uh, other things become important, like making a contribution to society. I'm going to talk about one or two of the, these contributions that uh, you'll be able to do with the capabilities we're bringing to market. Uh, on the so-called third platform. But anyway, the, the, really the main focus of this presentation is about customer intimacy, the importance of customer intimacy, number one. Two, uh, I'll go through a number of examples which show you it's really important to do it quickly because if you don't do it quickly, you're going to be at a significant competitive disadvantage. And then lastly, again, it's a cu cultural heritage difficulty for the Scots. We want to do it cheaply, right? So three things. Customer intimacy, do it rapidly, and do it as low cost as possible. It's not just about analytics. It's about analytics from data, an insight, and an execution. And as, it, uh, as from this Forrester quote here, what's really important is time to execution. So some of the, the uh, questions that were asked about how long will it take you to re respond. If you think about it today, your respond has to be much more immediate. If you think about a supplier, a, a, a company that many of us deal with, Amazon, if you buy enough books, or if you buy enough CDs, or if you buy enough uh, videos, they will start to predict the next book, movie, or music that you will like. And actually, more importantly, you can actually go in and edit it and guide the selection. So they're providing uh, recommendations even before you've decided that you want to actually go and get a book. That's the kind of response. That's the kind of insight and execution that we're going to have to, in your business and in our business, we're going to have to provide if we're going to achieve a, competitive, a sustainable competitive advantage. It's interesting thinking, of, thinking about the evolution of analytics. So 70 years ago, it was the purview of the government. And if you walk through the decades, uh, here we are today. And what's interesting is even, even small businesses can purchase the tools and use analytics to drive their business. Just some statistics for you. The R programming language from 2000 to 2009, it achieved 1 million programmers. Now, just to put that in context, the most popular programming languages of the world, Java, C Sharp, they have a population of 5 million. That's incredibly impressive. 20% of the population, of the program population, capable of programming in R. From 2000 to 2012, the growth of the software market in analytics has gone from 11 billion to 35 billion. In big blue, IBM, um, for, since 2005, I bought $16 billion worth of analytic software companies. But that's not the statistic that really uh, I find incredible. In the last year, positions, posted positions in analytics have grown 15,000%, such as the importance of analytics in businesses today. But there was a great American who said, I have a dream. Right? And the dream is that we take analytics to the ma masses. We provide the analytic tools, the analytic capabilities, so that many more um, industries, many more significant human problems can be addressed. And I'll go into some of them. Analytics isn't easy. My colleague Darcy put up the length of time that you believe it will take once you've gained an insight into the deployment of that insight. So Foresters, on a survey um, of major enterprises, found that over 50% of the enterprises will it at least take three months or more to deploy in operations that insight. And that's a major issue if you're trying to achieve a competitive advantage and improve your customer intimacy. I spoke about six years ago in Singapore at a, a banking and insurance conference. And the uh, topic I was talking about was technology um, in banking and insurance. And I sat through all the presentations, and the biggest problem, anybody know what the biggest problem with the insurance, the thing that they fret over the most in the insurance industry? 
lack of trust. We don't trust them. Go figure. We don't think they're going to pay us, and we don't think they're going to pay us enough. What's interesting here is it looks like the banking industry is not quite in as bad shape, but it looks like our customers, or your customers and our customers, have got grave reservations about um, uh, the credibility of banking. And so when you look at these statistics, it's pretty telling. Only 15%, as low as 15% trust and have confidence in the banking industry. 40% of consumers expressed decreasing confidence in 2012. That's up from 22% with increase, sorry, relative to 22% with increase in confidence. And just relative to 2011 to 2012, look at the number of people who have gone to three banks or more and look at the number of um, uh, consumers, 41% 2011, and down 10%. So these people who were only one bank, gone to several banks. So not quite a crisis, but certainly a, a, a serious concern for your business. OK, so I've already stated that analytics have the power to significantly improve customer intimacy. But it's not without obstacles. Analytics, particularly if you're going to use a tremendous amount of data, you're going to hire some of the top talent in an industry, it's expensive. It take, it's too complex. And I just mentioned the lack of analytic talent. 15,000% increase in job postings. They're hard to deploy. You make changes, you, as was pointed out earlier, you need your IT staff to help you do the deployment. And then you have all this data, all these analytics. How do you present them in a way that's easily interpretable? It causes a long time to insight. Actually, the siloed data is a huge problem, right? You have data lying all over your enterprise in your different departments. Worse, you have it in th third party vendors. And so you've got to aggregate and make that information into a structured form you can do something with. Cultural barriers. So, for the Oakland A's, the issue was one statistician versus scouts, coaches, and trainers, 30, who've, who know better. The gust instinct says, I watched them run. I watched them hit. He's the guy for us. And so you have that cultural tension between statistics and my gut instincts. So there are the obstacles. So what do we need to do? So at the very highest level, it's all about speed, speed of insight, speed of execution. But we've also got to keep the costs down. With rising data, with rising data, with rising amounts of data, I don't mean just big data, I mean messy data, dispersed data. With the cost of the expertise you require, you've got to, you've got to have solutions that are cost effective. And then you've got to make them easy to use, right? It's no good collecting all that data processing all that, all that data, being able to process it quickly, if you still, at the end of it, can't put it in production easily. Now, the last one's Illities, and that's the techie part of me coming out. Um, Illities is all about manageability, serviceability, maintainability, and it's also about security. So speed, cost, ease of use, and an infrastructure that supports making sure that it's always there for you. Again, I said I had uh, a dream. Um, this is one of the big ideas for me. <clears throat> I'm a big fan of TED. Um, uh, you, have, you have an iPad, TED is one of the apps you can download, and you get some of the greatest speakers in the world. And um, this situation um, is pretty interesting because um, on your left, the elderly gentleman, um, uh, Jan Stripling, was a dancer. He was a ballet dancer, a virtuoso. And unfortunately uh, for John, he has Parkinson's disease. Now, Parkinson's disease is a disease that 6.5 million people the world over have. It takes a, a neurologist visit, costs about $300 in the United States, and takes 20 minutes to diagnose. But luckily for him, even though he's got Parkinson's disease, he has a friend who cares and loves him, Max Little. And Max Little is a analyst. He's an applied mathematician who just happens to be also an expert in speech analytics, speech processing. 
So it turns out if you have Parkinson's disease, the disease manifests itself in three forms. Trembling, rigidity, and weakness. And so Max, being a particularly clever guy, says, okay, so I wonder how these symptoms will manifest themselves in the voice. And lo and behold, weakness, trembling in the voice, and rigidity. So what he does is, like any good analyst would do, he collects data. He gets 50 samples of people who have Parkinson's disease, and he builds a model. So they call in, he records, he builds a model. From 50 samples, he gets an accuracy of over 80% from a call and a model. So then what he does is he creates parkinsonsvoice.org, and he asks for 10,000 people with Parkinson's disease to call in. Guess what happens? He builds a model with 99% plus accuracy in predicting Parkinson's disease. Just a call, just a few seconds, and you will know. Now multiply $300 times $6.5 million, and that's the savings that an analytic solution can provide, and an analytic solution that you put in the cloud. Okay, so I've talked about all the power of analytics and how it can contribute to improve customer intimacy. So how can we improve your rate of success working with FICO, trying to improve customer industry? And we can do it through the third platform. If you haven't heard of the third platform, this is a definition that's been applied to I, by IDC and has been adopted by other analyst groups. And the first platform is the mainframe and terminal. You probably remember that, Darcy. And the second platform, <laughs> I can get my, I'll get my own back. Then there's the second platform, which obviously is the client server, which is still in existence today. But the third platform is kind of interesting. And actually, it's surprising they call it the third platform because as a technologist, this is actually four different platforms. And the four different platforms are the mobility platform, social media, big data, which we talked a lot about yesterday, and cloud computing. Now clearly, I don't have to say that uh, mobility and social media haven't revolutionized the way we work, and they re revolutionized the way we connect with our customers, because my grandmother could tell you that, right? It's so obvious. It's so obvious that you can use these medias to, to really direct powerful messages and control behavior. Social media, look at our kids. They spend as much time on social media as, as they do on TV. And big data, the power of big data, um, we went through it in nausea yesterday. So what about cloud computing? I thought what I'd do to set up um, what we're doing here at FICO is I thought I would describe the anatomy of a cloud. Now what's interesting is I could easily have chosen Apple and the business model of Apple. I could easily have chosen Google, I could easily have chosen Facebook, and I could easily have chosen LinkedIn. Because when you subdivide the important assets or components of their cloud, they're pretty much the same. So let's just take Salesforce.com. They introduced customer relationship management, okay? So providing um, uh, an environment where you could put leads in there, where you could document the engagement with the customers, where you could start to uh, assign a probability to whether you're going to close the deal. And then they moved from selling to the support and service. And then they went from support and service to other applications, such as HR. And so for them, there's the top of the layer, which is their services that you subscribe to on a SaaS basis. Then they took an old paradigm, which is we obviously can't develop all the applications, so let's provide a platform and then work with a community to broaden out and extend the applications. And so they created uh, AppForce, Force.com, and Hercule. And then they realized, okay, so I've created this platform, I've got to provide a mechanism for the people who develop applications to store data. And then I want to provide them a platform for which they can sell their solutions. And of course, I want to be able to connect to other clouds. So that is the anatomy of salesforce.com. So just in terms of summarizing, there's an application or services layer. There's a marketplace where you build applications and you can uh, store them, sell them, or, or give them away. 
There's a development platform, development tools. There's infrastructure, content repositories, compute capabilities, and there's a set of interfaces where you can exchange information or connect to other clouds. That's the anatomy of a cloud. So what I want to introduce you today is our big idea and the big idea behind this talk, which is the FICO analytic cloud. And actually, the example I gave you of uh, Jay Strawlings and Parkinson's is exactly the type of non-financial services application or, or uh, research project that we would like to have done in the cloud. What's in the FICO analytic cloud? The very same components that I just went through in salesforce.com. There is an infrastructure that will provide compute, storage, networking for you. And there's an underlying set of content repositories and connectivity um, capabilities. And then the second innovation that I'll describe in this presentation is something called the decision management platform. And that's the platform upon which you will develop your analytic-based applications. On top of that, there's the FICO applications, and I'll go through the, them in a second, and then there's an analytic marketplace where you can store components and you can store analytic applications. You can share them with your users. You can sell them as you so, so choose. So what do we have here? We have a stack in the cloud that will allow you to create a service, create an app, or use an app or use a service. Now, when I say create an app, Many people, uh, as uh, Darcy's uh, survey suggested, don't want to use the cloud for running the service, for either for security or um, there's many reasons why people want to have it in-house. So you can still develop your um, decision analytics-based application, and you can export it to your on-premise um, data center. So that's the FICO analytic cloud. Okay. So what are the cloud services that we'll provide? We actually provide many services already today. In other words, um, Entera, the FICO uh, customer dialogue manager, that's our, our ma marketing campaign manager, that was actually a cloud solution when we acquired them. And obviously a translation to the FICO cloud is relatively trivial. Liquid credit service, that's already a SaaS offer. Placements Plus is already a SaaS offer. And lastly, our mobility solution, the Adeptra um, acquisition, which we did six to nine months ago, it's also a SaaS service. So the point here is, whether it be customer acquisition, customer management, collections recovery, fraud, mobile, we're going to put all our services onto the cloud. And the big point is, they'll be easier, faster, time to service. That's the big differentiation. The second layer. I mentioned the decision management platform. So for those techies, forgive me, this is your Java enterprise execution platform. This is your J2E platform. Only in this case, you'll be able to uh, build models, build a, a definition of a business problem using rules, or some combination, and you'll be able to execute them on the decision management platform. And we'll have tools that are integrated with the platform. But more importantly, this platform will support big data, data connectors. It will support visualization tools, as well as the ability to integrate with third-party analytic services. And then the last component is all about speed. And this is a rapid application development environment that turns development from years to weeks. I'll give you a good example. We've spent about three and a half years developing an origination solution. And we're using a RAD environment to design the next generation environment. And we've gone from three and a half years, it's actually a portion of that since it's not all the application, to a few months. Right? You're getting a 5 to 10x, depending on the problem you're solving using RAD. So that's the application development, the decision management platform, big pardon. There's a small company called Splunk who in 2011 were a $100 million company. And in 2012, $185 million company, they're going through the roof. What do they have? They have a text analytics capability that takes unstructured data and turns it into structured data. And so we will provide that capability as an integrated uh, component of our tools also. Not Splunk, but using open source and innovations from FICO. 
And then lastly, integration with um, the various social media, because it's not just about proprietary uh, databases, proprietary data, it's also about real-time feeds from the world at large. So just to round things up, decision management platform, an integrated environment that allows you to create your applications, run your business scenarios, or just do fundamental analytics. So what's the benefits? The big benefit is time to solution. And the 10x is the claim by the RAD companies, as I said, it very much depends on what you're doing. But it's certainly four to 10 times traditional me methods uh, on a WebSphere stack or an Oracle stack. The other advantage is, because you've got this integrated environment, when you gain an insight, you can actually put it into production much more rapidly. And so you can make changes in your operation at the rate that you're finding insights. Because you're able to integrate dis disparate, messy data, it will help you improve your, your decision accuracy. And because it's all integrated in a management uh, environment, cloud environment, it will improve, it'll be easier to manage, improve your, your business performance. And lastly, circling back, that combination, what does it give you? It gives you speed to a competitive advantage. That's what the decision management platform gives you. Okay, so a number of you are tools users, uh, FICO tool users, you use our optimization products or you use our Blaze or you use our model builder. So we're, we're taking a um, uh, slightly uh, different and really an extension of what we've done previously. And we're, we, we look at the tools and are casting the tools as platforms in and of their own, their own right. So this is Express Optimizer. So you will have optimization, linear, non-linear solvers in the cloud. So you have optimization as a service. But the, but the problems or the domain-specific problems, content and application components at the top, are problems many customers have. And we've solved these problems in conjunction with other customers. So campaign optimization, portfolio optimization, uh, pricing, they're problems many companies have. And so the other big uh, takeaway is these components that we've developed with our, our customers, where um, appropriate and where uh, an agreement has been struck, will also be available in the cloud. And that will, again, accelerate your time to deployment. This is Model Builder. I mentioned that um, uh, Model Builder um, and R, well, I mentioned that R has gone to a million users. I also mentioned that um, text analytics is very important. And so what we've done with Model Builder is we've integrated R into the Model Builder framework. So you can use our analytic innovations and you can also use innovations from the open source. And with text analytics, uh, Lucene predominantly, you can use pretty much all the capabilities that are available in Splunk, and some, because Blaze and Model Builder, Blaze being a rules tool, you do all the text analytics using Tika and Lucene open source capabilities plus our innovations, then you get to make decisions using Blaze or be, uh, using Model Builder. And of course, everything will run on Hadoop, which is the big data, lingua franca for taking your data and splitting it up. So the takeaway, our tools will also be platforms. They'll be integrated with the decision management platform to rapidly uh, allow you to uh, develop your applications. Now, we're not and haven't been a rapid application development um, uh, company. However, we do partner with the two best in the industry. and. Um, Available in the cloud will be uh, uh, rapid application development from OutSystems, a Portuguese company, and from Mendex. Um, so both rapid application development environments will be available in, a, in our cloud. Zementus. Zementus is a leader in PMML. Um, if you go to LinkedIn, the, the CEO, who's probably somewhere in the audience, Michael Zeller, um, he's a leader in the PMML standards. And we've taken the Zementus uh, product and we've integrated it within um, uh, the decision management platform. Again, to, to provide you with our innovations as well as standard innovations. I mentioned SaaS, and we work with the Carolina company to allow the import and processing of SaaS models. 
And then lastly, Tableau is the leader in presentation. So we use Tableau in the cloud. So we've taken these third-party products, we'll make them available in the cloud, we've integrated them with products, and you will benefit with, from the integration in terms of developing your solutions and taking them to market. I mentioned the, the marketplace within Salesforce. We will also have a marketplace. And the marketplace will allow you and other uh, partners, um, individuals, to develop applications using the infrastructure and store them uh, in our cloud and make them available for sale or contribution. And this will be a big part of creating that network effect. Because if we're ever to realize the promise of analytics, we want to get that network in effect into place. And uh, if you are unsure of really what I'm talking about, go look at salesforce.com. They've got a whole bunch of companies, over 200 companies, that provide analytic solutions, provide marketing solutions, provide add-ons to sales to enhance the offers that they provide. Big data um, sounds easy um, in one sense and sounds difficult in another. And Hadoop has become the standard platform um, for really taking the problem and breaking it up and allowing you to get at uh, solving the problem in a, in a, a more structured, uh, divide-and-conquer fashion. And so we will provide a Hadoop infrastructure within the cloud. Now, it turns out that Hadoop has a lot of complexities associated with it. And so uh, cascading is an open-source um, uh, offer which basically abstracts the complexities of Hadoop away. And we will also provide that in the cloud. And lastly, uh, we'll partner with uh, Cloudera. A number of our products are already certified against Cloudera. Cloudera are an expert in the management of Hadoop and training of Hadoop skills. So that's the big infrastructure uh, or the, the infrastructure available within our cloud um, that our customers will have available, them, available to them for running big data. So just to summarize, there's really five layers of the FICO Analytic Cloud. There's the ability to store content and import content uh, through standard, standards interfaces. There's a, a compute storage and networking infrastructure, which also has um, big data software components like Hadoop, Cascade, and Cloudera. A decision management platform where you'll construct or run your applications. You can also take the FICO applications and extend them and customize them and lastly, there's a marketplace where you can go and use components, use applications that are either free or for purchase. Let me just uh, talk about another partner, uh, 41st Parameter. Uh, what do 41st Parameter do? Um, they're the leading uh, device authentication. So they ensure that uh, it is indeed your phone or your PC that's being used to access your, um, the accounts. And so we're partnering with them. They're actually in the audience. Um, and this is an example of a cloud-to-cloud -cloud offer. As I mentioned, they provide a cloud service that um, is the uh, leader in terms of uh, device authentication and device reputation analytics. So they're offering that space as fr uh, fraud network. And we've provided APIs within, within Falcon and Falcon in the cloud that will allow the integration of um, that capability. They also have a, a, an interesting offer called Trust Insight. Um, this is a, an interesting offer because for card not present uh, uh, problems, they provide basically a, a second um, communication channel between the card not present merchants and the, uh, the card providers. And clearly, the more that um, this ecosystem can be developed, the more effective we all as a community will be at uh, fighting fraud. So taking a step back and netting all this out, I said that analytics, they're expensive, they're complex, there's cultural barriers, long time to insights. There's not enough good tools to really present the information in the way we consume. And what I hope I've started to do is Talk about an infrastructure, talk about a set of services and solutions that allow these barriers to be broken down, right? To where rather than do three and a half years to develop an origination solution, you can de develop one in a matter of weeks or months and then do a point and click for deployment. Now, 
if I didn't mention it, the cloud, the audience for the cloud is software developers, it's analysts, it's line of business. And we provide tools and capabilities up and down that uh, continuum. To me, I'm incredibly excited about this announcement. Not because I'm a techie, but because what this can do, um, yes, for financial services, but also what it can do for mankind. I don't think this is a big idea. I think it's a giant idea. And um, this is sepsis. I've got to say that I didn't really know what sepsis was. And yet it's uh, pretty close to the number one killer of mankind. And it's blood cancer. And it turns out, as the statistics say, 20,000 uh, deaths uh, per day worldwide. That's a staggering number. 750,000 cases per year in the US and 253,000 deaths. Now, that number, $17 billion, is what Medicare, Medi-Cal, the government pays. The number is actually $48 billion. So we have a huge problem with staggering numbers of people affected and yet we have the capabilities to make a major dent in this. And so um, there's a small company. Um, uh, it was a spin-off of a company in San Diego called Parity Computing. The CEO, I've worked with the CEO for some time. What he did was he built an analytics platform. Now, he struggled because he had to cobble together the analytics. He had to build his own platform. And he's worked for several years um, almost failing, not making any money, and eventually got to where he built an analytics platform, his own DMP, if you like, for sepsis. And the results are staggering, right? The results are staggering. So uh, for a, a, a hospital with 250 beds, the annual savings using his solution is 2.5 million. But look at the reduction, the promised reduction in mortality, 30%. And the improvement, this comment around significant quality of life improvements, that's because sepsis attacks all of your organs. And this analytic platform will predict the, when it's likely to happen, when, how it will escalate, and then what treatments should be recommended at different stages. It's a phenomenal innovation. It's as good a big data example as you'll ever find. They pull medical records, personal genome records, they connect to the, the patient on a 24 by 7 basis. They aggregate all information. They use an analytic platform to then distill what's needed and make recommendations. To me, if the FICO cloud can realize anything like the potential, we'll have been incredibly successful. Thank you.